Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Guys Tech. I'm Rob, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over everything you need to know before you purchase that new projector screen for your home theater, right after the intro. So right off the bat, let's talk about one of the most important questions you need to ask yourself. What size screen do you need? This is really important because the size of your screen will generally determine how far away you can sit. If you have a 1080p projector, a good way to start is to take the diagonal size of your screen and multiply it by 1.5. For instance, if your screen is 96 inches diagonally, multiply that by 1.5 to get 144 inches or 12 feet. In our theater, we have a 120 inch screen, so if you multiply that by 1.5, you get 180 inches or 15 feet. Now, of course, this is a general guideline and because viewing distance is very subjective, don't be afraid to move a little closer or further away. We're actually 13 feet away from our screen, which I feel is both comfortable and immersive. Now, if you have a 4K projector, you can actually sit as close as your screen is wide. So if you have a 120 inch screen, this rule would allow you to sit as close as 10 feet. Now keep in mind that these rules put resolution first, meaning that they're trying to keep you far enough from the screen so you can't actually see the pixels. Anyway, now that you've determined the exact screen size and seating position, it's time to start talking about screen material. If you're looking to get started as cheap as possible, you can try using projector screen paint. Several companies offer different paints designed to turn an untextured wall into a projector screen, and they work okay. But personally, I would recommend going with an actual projector screen. If that's the way you decide to go, the biggest thing to consider is the color of the material. White screens are generally best at giving you a bright picture, while gray screens are typically used in places where you have more ambient light or you need more contrast. In our theater, we use a white screen material with a gain of 1.1 because we're able to completely black out our theater which gives us the best image quality possible. And speaking of gain, there are two things to consider. How many lumens your projector outputs and your viewing angles. The higher the gain of the screen, the smaller the viewing angles become. This is due to the fact that a higher gain screen actually focuses the light back at a more narrow angle to the viewer. So like I mentioned before, our screen has a gain of 1.1, which means with a 2000 lumen projector like ours, we actually see 2200 lumens being reflected back. The texture of the screen material can also play a factor in image quality. For most regular projectors, you'll want something that looks really matte, but you can also get ambient light rejection or ALR screen materials. These materials are actually designed to reflect ambient light away from your eyes so the picture looks bright and vibrant without having to completely black out your entire room. There are a couple different types of ambient light rejection, angular reflective and retro reflective. Retro reflective screens reflect light directly back at the source of the light, so they're incredibly good at rejecting a lot of ambient light at the expense of having fairly noticeable gain drops depending on the viewing angle. Angular reflective screens reflect ambient light at exactly the opposite angle of incidence or the angle at which ambient light hits the screen. These screens have multiple layers that reflect light and usually have better viewing angles than retro reflective screens, but can be less effective at rejecting ambient light. If you're not sure what to get, just get the best screen you can afford at your budget. Either will work fine and generally manufacturers will provide projector placement guidelines that will help you know if you're looking at the right kind of screen material. You can get these kinds of screens for regular projectors or even ultra short throw projectors, and I'll discuss that more in a little bit. And the last type of material I wanna mention is acoustically transparent screen material. This kind of material is actually designed to allow sound from your speakers to pass through so you can put your whole front stage behind the screen, a lot like a real movie theater. You can get acoustically transparent screens with either perforated or woven materials. Perforated screen material is actually pretty similar to regular screen material, with the biggest difference being that there are a bunch of tiny holes in the material to let sound go through. These types of screens give you great image quality, but they can suffer from the moiré effect, where you actually can get visible lines in the projector's image that line up with the pattern of the dots in the material. Woven screens, on the other hand, are better at passing sound through than a perforated screen, but they do suffer from image artifacts like poor color temperature and double imaging, 
where you can actually see the light reflecting from the front and the back of the screen. If you don't want or need to put your speakers behind your screen, you probably don't even have to worry about acoustically transparent materials. Now that we've got material out of the way, let's talk about what kind of screen you should get. A fixed screen, a manual pull-down screen, or even a retractable motorized screen. As you can probably tell here, we've got a fixed projector screen which stays on the wall at all times. Now in my opinion, these give the most home theater feel and look great whether you're watching a movie or not. Having a fixed screen also means you have the ability to add lights around the back of the frame. Now you can either buy frames with LEDs already installed, or you can do what we did and actually put some aluminum angles around the whole screen and attach RGB light strips to it. This Elite Screens is a spring tension screen, so the material is very flat, making sure the picture is always focused and clear. Before I got this screen, I actually had a non-tensioned manual pull-down screen. It was a great way to get into a big screen without spending a lot of money, but after a few years I got tired of all the waves in the screen and I tried converting it into a fixed screen, and I even made a video about it, so if you're interested, go ahead and check it out at the end of this video. And finally, we have to talk about motorized screens. These type of screens are similar to pull-down screens, but they're actually motorized, and usually you can control them with a simple remote. These screens are a great option if you want a really good looking picture without taking up too much space. And you can even get most motorized screens with tab tension material so the image will stay flat while you watch a movie. Anyway, back to projectors. We have a normal throw projector that sits about 14 feet from our screen. Now if you want to go with a different kind of projector, like an ultra short throw, you'll want to make sure you get the right screen for your system so you don't get any weird visual artifacts. The amazing part about everything I've been talking about in this video is that you can mix and match every aspect of your screen. No matter what scenario you're in, it should be easy to find the perfect screen for your setup and your room. I'll leave links in the description to a few great articles that should lead you in the right direction while you look for the perfect projector screen. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what kind of screen you have, or if you don't have a screen yet, what kind of screen you want to get. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, have an awesome day.